Good evening and thanks for joining us on another episode of Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria. I'm your anchor, Gabriel Ojile. In its bid to attain food security, the federal government, through the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security, has prioritized the production of certain crops. Sorghum is one of them. Towards this end, the ministry and other stakeholders are working towards enhancing the production and value chain of this crop because of its economic importance. In tonight's episode of the program, therefore, we shall be evaluating sorghum production in Nigeria, the economic importance and the policy direction of government as well as the efforts of researchers in the development of this crop. Keep watching. Every part of Nigeria has something to offer. Before we go into our main subject of sorghum farming and production, we have news from the diary of the ministry to keep you abreast with the latest development in Nigeria's agricultural sector as a whole. In the news, Agri Ministry calls for partnership with the US to fight hunger in Nigeria, even as it calls on foreign investors to invest in Nigeria's agricultural sector. Do stay tuned for details. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security has called for more synergy between Nigeria and the United States in developing strategies that will increase food production and end hunger in Nigeria. The Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, Ernest Afolabi Umahi, made this call while welcoming the United States Regional Councilor for Agricultural Affairs, who was on a courtesy call to the ministry. Umahi stated that Nigeria and the U.S. have come a long way in bilateral relationships in the area of agriculture and will benefit more from this partnership in the face of looming hunger. We welcome any area of interest and cooperation that we can get from this meeting on how to strengthen the existing cooperation and fill the gaps that exist. Uh, as you know very well, we are in a period of emergency in terms of agriculture and food security. Uh, I would say is uh, some hunger on the land because of the escalating food prices. So I know there's no country really that uh, will not support or have some subsidy for its farmers. And, uh, for us, some of the strategies of the US government we work on, on how we can also navigate the present crisis in our hands. While speaking, the United States Regional Council for Agricultural Affairs, Christ Balek, extolled the cultural and agricultural potentials of Nigeria and pledged the support of the United States towards helping Nigeria to develop the potentials for food security in Nigeria and export. And I know there's uh, some problems with uh, food prices right now and, and uh, the availability of products. Uh, and and my, my hope and my wish is this emergency is is temporary and short-lived and uh, that Nigeria excels and rises and it becomes a, a producer, exporter of, of food and agricultural products. Also in attendance during the visit were the directors of the ministry and the team of experts who accompanied the councillor. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security has called on foreign and local investors to invest in the Nigerian agricultural sector. The Director of the Federal Department of Agriculture of the Ministry, Abdullahi Garba Abubakar, made this call in an interview with our correspondent in his office in Abuja. Abdullahi stated that Nigeria has been endowed with vast arable land and the ministry would support any foreign or local investor in the area of production, processing or any aspect of the agricultural value chain. In Nigeria, we have 94 million hectares of arable land. Currently, the production is going on on only 40% of that land. So, there is a vast land that investors can come. If you want 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, or even 10,000 hectares to cultivate sesame 
or any other crop for that matter, it is available. Be it in the rainy season or in the wet season, because we have water bodies in this country. So investors are at leverage to come and select the type of crop they want to cultivate. Sorghum is one of the crops that is close in ranking with maize in terms of economic importance. Nigeria is the lead producer of sorghum in the world. But what is the level of production of sorghum in Nigeria? How are technologies, innovations and policies driving the production of this crop in Nigeria? What can the country do differently to boost the production of this crop for local and export demands? Answers to these questions will be our focus in our next segment record of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security. Keep watching. Sorghum, also known as guinea corn or broom corn, is a flowering plant in the grass family. Some species are grown as cereals for human consumption and pasture for animals. It is cultivated in warm climates worldwide. Sorghum was domesticated from its wild ancestor more than 5,000 years ago in the location that is today called Sudan. Sorghum is a grain that provides protein, carbohydrates and fiber but is low in sodium and fat. Sorghum is used for beverages, bread, animal feed, natural and cost-effective fuel source. Sorghum can also be cooked as grain like rice, milled into flour or popped like popcorn. The crop is used in the industries for the production of many food items. We have biscuit, we have uh, beverages, okay? We have beverages, we have confectionaries, where this particular crop is being utilized. Sorghum is a crop that is now being fortified with vitamin A, vitamins B1, B2, and B12, depending on the need of the particular geographical zone. And this crop, as I said, is very important in the sense that it can be used in different forms. Available research has shown that the world total amount production of sorghum in 2022 was 66,206,000 metric tons. Nigeria accounts for 11% of the world's sorghum production and followed by the United States, which accounts for 10%. A further breakdown will show that Nigeria produced 6,700 million metric tons of sorghum in 2022, while the United States produced 6.6 .6 million metric tons, Sudan 5.5 million metric tons, Mexico 5.3 million metric tons, Ethiopia 5,000 million metric tons, India 4.9 million metric tons, and other countries produce 31.2 metric tons. For now, we have the production level of uh, 6.7 million metric tons. Moving away from what it was from 4.5 million metric tons. And uh, it is emphasized that with uh, other factors put in place, it will help in the country meeting its national demand, a demand of about 9.3 million metric tons. Sorghum does well in the savanna belt of Nigeria. It is mainly grown in the northern states of Nigeria. Some of the sorghum producing states in Nigeria include Gombe, Bochi, Yobi, Benwe, Plateau, Nasarawa, Adamawa, Kaduna, Jigawa, Borno, Kano, Kebi, Kasina, Niger, Taraba, Sokoto, Zamfara, among others. By and large, it is a crop that can grow in all the states, only that maybe they may not have a comparative advantage. There are other crops that, that do better 
than this particular sorghum. Therefore, people go into the crops that are more popular and that can earn them a lot of income than the one that will not. So sorghum is basically grown in those states I have mentioned in a large and commercial quantities. In spite of the fact that the crop does well in these states, it is not without challenges. The challenges of sorghum production in Nigeria include fall army worm infestation in the northeastern states, low yield per hectare, poor method of harvesting, high cost of inputs such as fertilizer, seeds and pesticides, funding, low rate of mechanization, limited access to markets, insecurity among other challenges. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security and other stakeholders are aware of these challenges and have taken steps to tackle these challenges. In tackling the fall army worm infestation in the northeastern states of Nigeria, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security has come to the aid of sorghum farmers through provision of insecticide, among others, as temporal measures. We have been in touch with the farmers and we have been giving them these chemicals at highly subsidized price. In fact, it is they are just paying for 25% of the cost. So when they spray it, and that kills those worms, they don't exist again. And but if a farmer did not report in good time, that is where the problem is. It becomes devastating to the extent that even if you kill them, you cannot recover this crop. It has already gone. So that's why we always encourage farmers, whatever they see on their farm that is strange, they should report it to the nearest office where we can send in our experts to look at it, what is it about, so that we can give a quick remedy to that. A committee was also set up by the ministry to conduct a survey of the farms affected by the fall army worm and to make recommendations of how the government could intervene further through research for a lasting solution. We expect that when it is done, uh, support should be given to the farmers affected through giving them improved sorghum certified seeds. The Institute for Agricultural Research has also made some significant efforts in developing about 46 different varieties of sorghum that are high yielding, adaptable to climate change and resistant to pests and diseases. In terms of sorghum, we are able to double, more than double productivity of sorghum from less than one ton per hectare to over two tons per hectare of sorghum. We have also cut down the maturity period of sorghum. Now, sorghum can grow almost everywhere. To popularize the research breakthroughs and increase production, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security has an input distribution program that supports sorghum farmers with the improved seeds developed by the Research Institute, which are high yielding among other futures. In terms of supporting the smallholder farmers with good quality seeds, these seeds are hybrid seeds that will give you high yield. Good enough, our researchers have developed resist, uh, drought resistant seeds or pest resistant seeds. So we always encourage our farmers to go and buy this kind of seeds. Despite the support we are giving, we know it may not reach every farmer, but at least to the level we have been able to do, farmers are happy and they can go to a particular uh, farm center and procure this type of seeds. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security has sorghum as priority crop in the National Agricultural Technology and Innovation Policy and it is focused at deploying new technologies and innovations to support farmers in the states that have comparative advantage of the crop. The policy also encourages youth to go into agriculture as well as improve the livelihood of farmers. Like in the case of the NATI, which is National uh, agricultural technology and innovative plan. It is mainly to help in promoting the production of most crops. Yes, so as we can now get self-sufficiency in the crop production, specifically uh, our own value chain.
The program is transforming agriculture in Nigeria, and we have been discussing the prospects and challenges of sorghum production in Nigeria. In our next segment, we are focusing on the partnership that the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security is having with other stakeholders to mechanize production and other aspects of the sorghum value chain. Keep watching. For Nigeria to attain self-sufficiency in food production and the development of the sorghum value chain in particular, there is need to change the narrative from manual labor of using hoes and cutlasses to the use of tractors and other machineries. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security has a tractorization program to make tractor accessible by smallholder farmers tractorization program of the ministry. The ministry having looked at the need for our farmers to have tractors on farm, realized that the farmers are smallholder farmers that cannot even afford to buy a tractor. Therefore, we are encouraging that there could be vendors who can bring in these tractors through a bank arrangement to have a deferred payment by farmers. Deferred payment in the sense that if a farmer can afford 40% of the cost of that tractor, let him be allowed to offtake it by bringing a down payment of the 40%. Then the remaining 60%, he should be given a deferred payment of about three years. Similarly, the Ministry is also partnering with the Federal Republic of Brazil to boost access to tractors in Nigeria through the proposed Green Imperative Program of the Ministry. Mechanization is inevitable if we want to have food security. The government, in its own wisdom, is trying to see that we have really mechanized our agriculture in this country two ways. One, it has a bilateral agricultural development between Nigeria and Brazil. That is another mechanization effort that is being done by the government to make sure that we have all the necessary equipment, not only tractors. The tractors are the major drivers, but you have attachments to the tractors that can either plant, spray, harvest, and even process. So these are the efforts the government is doing on that side. Very soon we will hear the outcome. If the program is being launched, we call that program the Green Imperative Project, which is really on board and we are trying to see how we can get it uh, launched. To tackle the issue of mechanization and post-harvest losses and improved methods of harvesting sorghum, the Institute for Agricultural Research, Zaria, has developed multi-purpose threshers. In the area of uh, mechanization, we have developed a number of labor-saving technologies. One of the major problems of farming, or yes, let me say farming, not agriculture in general, is the labor intensiveness. Uh, today, unlike our parents and our grandparents, the youths of today uh, may not necessarily have that strength to be using hoe and cutlasses. Of course, why should they use hoe and cutlasses when in other parts of the world there are other may, many labor-saving technologies uh, that have been developed? So for us also in the Institute, we have developed a number of uh, labor-saving technologies, especially and the post harvest. In the post harvest, we have a number of threshers. Uh, these threshers, uh, be it for cowpea, be it for groundnut, be it for um, maize, be it for sorghum. In the area of value addition, the Institute for Agricultural Research, Zaria, has also developed different products from sorghum which industrialists can adopt to popularize them for food security and improved livelihoods. Let me just use the, the one that we have done uh, recently. We produce flakes of different flavors. 
different flavors. You have the salted, you have uh, the, the, the sugar, you also have what the one that you didn't add anything to it. Then these are new products that we have developed. Again, also at the Institute, uh, through that program, we have succeeded in coming up with uh, composite flowers. The Ministry is also supporting the farmers with post-harvest and value addition equipment. We also bring in uh, corn flour meal where people can even use it to grind it into flour, the sorghum. And that one is another hot cake now in the market. People don't wait until when they want to cook, they go and harvest, trash it, grind it, and then bring it. People are there doing it as business. They buy the sorghum, grind it in flour form, package it, so that when you come and take it, you just pour it into the hot water and your meal is ready. To ensure that farmers take advantage of the effort of the Research Institute, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security is also partnering with commodity associations and farmers are also advised to join associations to get the government support. Structurization program of the ministry. The ministry having looked at the need for our farmers to have tractors on farm, realize that the farmers are smallholder farmers that cannot even afford to buy a tractor. Even though, technically, we advise a farmer who has only two hectares. You don't need to bother yourself buying a tractor. It is only the large-scale farmers that will be beneficial for them to buy a tractor. But then, that smallholder farmer wants to mechanize his farm. What happens? Therefore, we are encouraging that there could be vendors who can bring in these tractors through a bank arrangement to have a deferred payment by farmers. Deferred payment in the sense that if a farmer can afford 40% of the cost of that tractor, let him be allowed to offtake it by bringing a down payment of the 40%. Then the remaining 60%, he should be given a deferred payment of about three years. Thanks for joining us again on the program Transforming Agriculture. Do you have any question about the agricultural sector? Do you have cost rates that are fast growing? The anticipated poverty as well is also very... Do you have inquiries on any issues raised on the program? The fish has been kept here since Monday. That's about two days ago. Would you like to know more on agricultural processes and practice? Do send us an SMS to the number showing on your screen. You can also reach us on any of our social media platforms for more information. Indeed, Nigeria is highly blessed with arable land and other resources to attain food security. While the government intensifies efforts to support the value chain of agriculture towards attaining self-sufficiency in food production, it is imperative for citizens to take advantage of the potentials in the agricultural sector to actualize the goal of food security and improve the livelihoods. Join us again next week, same time, same station, for another interesting episode of Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria. I am Gabriel Ujile. Have a good night. <music>